Tropical Smoothie Cafe believes you deserve a getaway every day, not just once a year. Summer mocktail smoothies are here for a limited time at Tropical Smoothie Cafe. Mocktail hour on the pool deck is a sip away. I'm excited about the Mango Berry Cosmo Smoothie. Mm, I can't wait. We go to we go to Tropical Smoothie Cafe three times a week, and this is on my list for this week. You guys go and try it out because you're on Tropic Time now. Hey everybody, welcome to Pink Shade. It's Monday, Mugshot Monday, Malfeasance Monday, Meatloaf Monday. Ooh, if I would just would have had my sticker ready, I could have promoted some merch. Um, look, here we Do go, it guys. Anyway. Yeah, here we go. Mugshot Monday. Get your stickers nice. online. Get your journalism stickers online. Nice. Um, how you doing, Keisha? I am doing much better than I was doing this week so much better yeah you said you had a bad week and then also you had terrible terrible weather I didn't, yeah we were like, I, you know i don't watch the news oh god it was awful like houston got rocked like there's thousands of people without electricity still Ooh. and this happened like on was it monday or tuesday like really? these got torn up it was four people were killed no it was bad sorry. yeah we had tornadoes it was just it was awful. And then your daughter yeah, ran over the neighbor's lawn. <laughs> yeah, she fucked that shit up. Um, you know, bad weather causes me to have a bad lupus flare-up. So I was in bed literally all week. It was one of the worst flare-ups I've ever had. I mean, what does that feel like? Ribs were hurting. What's the, what uh, are so, the symptoms? So it's every move you make feels like you're walking through quicksand, even if you can walk. My wrists hurt really bad, so it feels like someone's trying to break my wrist. My body feels like it's encased in cement. Um, wow. I really can't do anything. Uh, I'm just stuck in bed. I'm nauseated, brain fog. Um, my ribs felt like they had been like in a boxing match with Mike Tyson. Wow. Uh, yeah, you feel like you've got like the worst case of the flu. And you just hurt so bad. It's 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 pathetic. You just feel pathetic. You know, you just cannot do anything. Is it just you like can't eat. everything is like an inflammation, and so it feels like it's tight. inflammation. It's, yeah, it's t like think of the worst back pain you've ever had. You know, when your yeah. back hurts really bad. Yeah, times a hundred. Mm. Yeah, I lost five pounds because you just can't even eat, and sometimes I get really bad mouth sores. Fortunately, I did not get that this time. But yeah, I was it was bad. It was pretty fucked up. I'm sorry to hear true. that. And I wish oh. that um, sometimes when I say like, let's do recording, you're always saying yes, yes, yes. And sometimes you could tell me no. Like, I don't feel good. And the answer is no. I was better about Thursday night. Okay. Well, yeah. I want to hear about your husband doing stand-up comedy. Tell me, Tell me about that. Oh, so most people don't know that James used to do uh, stand-up comedy professionally. I did not know anything about this. Yeah, he he's did. like a, he he's like a, like an IT guy, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. He used to do it professionally. Like, so okay, when I say professional, professionally, not like um, Kevin Hart or anything like that. But yeah, but still, you make like a certain amount of money per year. You have to count it. So as professionally, but right. yeah, he used to travel around and do it, but he had his like real job. Like he couldn't like not do his real job. Like, right. Right. All. Yeah. Because he would not have me if that were the case. <laughs> <laughs> and so, so he, did, uh, he did it this weekend. And how was it? Oh God, it was horrible. It's a horrible show. He was funny. Okay. I was like, what? But okay. The rest of the show was horrific. It was, a, oh, no. I tell you what, the, the entire night was weird. Mary Payne, this is how bad it was. So James had done his set and mm. um, we had some friends there, but we were getting ready to leave. Uh -huh. So there, there is this thing culturally, mm -hmm. you feel cultural obligations. Okay. Mm -hmm. So the club was quite vanilla. Okay. It, mm -hmm. With the exception of me. Okay. okay. <laughs> so, uh -huh. And it's one other person who happened to be going up on stage. So 
I feel a cultural obligation to stay. I'm like, well, I can't leave when the one black guy's going on stage. I've got to stay. <laughs> yeah. So I'm yeah. like, okay, let me see what this guy's all about. I'm like, he's he's short. He's okay. gonna be funny. Okay. This motherfucker went up there and has stolen every single joke that he told. Oh no. From the start to the end. But here's the messed up part. They were all technically black jokes that I'd heard on TikTok. So I was the only person who had heard them. So I'm right. like going around like, he he stole all that. I'm like, you guys haven't heard these jokes? I'm like, no, we haven't heard these jokes. I'm like, what the fuck? Like, I've heard all these jokes. It was bad. It was so really? bad. I, I was so drunk as well. And that's I, unusual. I don't feel like you're a, you're much of a getting drunk kind of gal. I'm a lightweight, like yeah. a really, really bad. Like, so as we were driving from the club, apparently James was about to run a red light and I'm screaming from the back seat, red light. It, what did I say? Light is red, light is red <laughs> or red is no red is light. They said, I kept saying red is light, red is light. It was, a, it was a very odd night. We ended up going to Waffle House. I paid some kid, some 13-year-old kid who was out at 11 o'clock at night doing fake tattoos on people at Waffle House. Paid her 20 bucks to tell me what the waiter's name was because he like has on a name tag that says, I just work here. Okay. Yeah. So, of course, you know me. Oh, this is a challenge. You don't want us to know your name. Oh, oh, I'm going to find out your fucking name, buddy. Okay. All right. Yeah. Okay. So and? then we, his name was Ray Ray. Okay. Ray Ray <laughs> is a perfectly good name. Why didn't you put that on yeah, his tag? I, I don't know. So then uh, our other friend, you know, we love the movie. So we decided we want to go see an 11 o'clock movie. And I'll tell you. What? what? Okay. Jay Jones. So, so as we're walking through the theater, James basically did that. He goes, I can't believe you motherfuckers. It's 11 o'clock at night. We're coming to see a movie. This is going home time. I'm like, okay, dad. Yeah, <laughs> I'm with so... him. It's too late. That's too late. And you mm -mm. know what? The movie was horrible. What was so it? So we couldn't, the strangers do not go and see it. Is it, it like a scary just... movie? I wouldn't go to a scary movie. Okay, James. Okay. He doesn't like scary movies as well. No, I don't. I hate and it. And then this was, oh God, it was so bad. It was so bad. Did we you get saw some two bad movies stuff, in a row. Did you get some Look, bad stuff? I did it because I was so full and so full of alcohol. I right. couldn't eat a thing. But our friend did. He went and got popcorn and I told him, don't look at me. Was so nauseated from the smell of the popcorn. He's like, that are you fake sure butter. That fake butter smell is so gross. And I don't know where he put the food at. I'm like, how are you still eating? We just ate at <laughs> Waffle House. I didn't finish. Oh, yeah. I forgot you had House. eaten at Waffle House. And now you're yes. going to go. Okay. Yes. Okay. Now like I can see. Yeah. I'm like, you really need to go see a doctor. Like, what is what is wrong? <laughs> Why do you want to eat right now? Like, oh God. I'm like, it took I was swallowing down stomach bile at that point. Like, why that sounds so eating? fun. And then it okay, was so a this was a fun night. This was after your lupus flare up. So you were like, I'm gonna kick I was it. ready to, in the I'm, bed. I'm yeah. ready to live it up. Yes. Yeah. Whenever yeah. I'm done with the flare up, I'm ready to live it up. I'm just so done. Um, but we we laughed our asses off that whole night, but it was yeah. a weird fucking night. It was just <laughs> Very. Well, I'd, I'd like very to see weird. some of James's stand-up comedy. You know, I love stand-up comedy. YouTube, you can YouTube it. Okay, I'll just, I'll just look up James comedy. Owen, James Owens in Houston, stand-up comedy. It'll come up. Need it, or anywhere because he's traveled. So Do, I mean, does he have a Owens stage comedy. name or anything like that? Okay, you know well, Now you're going to goddamn for you know damn well he don't have no stage name. <laughs> No. Well, James Owens is such a basic name. I mean, you know. Tell me about it. Yeah. yeah. I remind him all the time how basic it is. Like, I thought I was going to marry someone with like an exotic last name. You know what I mean? And I get I Owens. Yeah. I know. But I was happy when I got married. And because, you know, I mean, you don't have to take their name. But I was like, yes, anything's better. My, I need an upgrade to my last name. So I got one. I was happy. Gilbert what, what's better. your maiden? What's Cosser. Your maiden? Cosser. C-O-S-S-A-R. So. That's a little try, exotic. Try to be Mary Payne Cosser your whole life and explain the double name. And you haven't even gotten to the last name part yet. 
Yeah, it's hard. My maiden name is o- uh, Holman. I know it's not nice whole. Name. I did the whole hyphenated thing. Yeah. For a while, but yeah. it was a lot to write. Rakesha Holman Owens. Yeah. You and got I an got to be Anna Dash. Yeah. Yeah, I was like, fuck that shit. After a while, it's just like, it's just Owens. Owens? Yes, Owens. I am all Owens. I am Owens. Hear me roar. Owens. So, yeah. And James d- didn't like it at all. So, he just wanted me to be Owens. So, he finally- I know he does. He wouldn't he like a hyphenate. Yeah. He did, He wanted me to be all his. So Claim his woman. There you go. Claim his woman. Yeah. Oh Lord. Well, let's, let's roll into these people and we can talk about some more claiming of some people. Um, Ugh. This is love during lockup season five, episode five. You guys stay tuned to the end. Cause at the end, I'm going to tell you about what's coming up next after love during lockup ends. I'll let you know what we're going to be covering next, but you'll have to stay to the end to hear that. So this episode, oh my is God. Called, what I forgot. We're, I forgot we're on video. Oh, cool. Well, we are. We're on video. I am sitting here making all the ugly faces that I normally make when it's just you and I talking. <laughs> we are on video. We have video. we have a bunch of people subscribed over on that YouTube. Oh, like I can't I can't I'm even so believe it. I can't even believe oh, it. What we do. Let me act like a proper <laughs> lady over. Let me sit straight. Let me straighten up my clothes. Let me stop jiggling my arm fat. I'm just acting a fool. Okay, I've got You're myself crazy. together. I never I do together. really anything different for video other than I put on a little mascara and that's it. Oh, yeah, I'm all the way different. You know how I normally look. Oh, I know. I know. Mm-hmm. I know. Mm-hmm. I did. I mean, I, I dried my hair. I didn't come in like a ponytail. You guys know that feeling. At the end of a long day, you come home and you just want to take off your bra. I have been known to take off my bra as I'm driving up my driveway and flinging it into my purse or flinging it onto the floorboard and then not being able to figure out where my bra went. That's not a great feeling. But you know that feeling? Like, it's the worst. Sometimes your bra is so uncomfortable. And that's why in the pandemic, I coined the phrase sleeping bra because I have a lot of bras around my house that are too gross to wear in public, but definitely you could sleep in them. You know what I'm saying? Well, Honey Love has completely changed the game. They've got bras that are so comfortable. You can wear them all day. You're not going to throw it onto your car seat or in the back seat or like hit a neighbor in their face as they're walking the dog. That's funny. Um, it, they have a bra. It's called the crossover bra. Okay. This is the one I like. You can wear it all day. And you can sleep in it if you want to. It's great. It's going to be your new go-to. This bra gives you all the support of a traditional bra without any underwires. Plus, it's got this mesh detailing, which makes it look a little bit sexy. You know, that's that's kind of how I look at myself. You know, I need just sometimes a little bit of sexy, not too much. I don't want to like overwhelm people. But this is the one bra you will actually enjoy wearing and don't want to take it off and fling it out your car window. And if you're tired of bras that cause that like back fat in the back, you know, oh, these bras are designed to completely smooth that bra bulge. For a more relaxed lounge bra, they also have the recommended V bra. It does offer the support of a traditional bra without that underwire like we talked about. It's designed to lift and separate with the molded cups, but it's not like a shelf. You know, you don't get that uniboob. You guys, the uniboob is the worst. But it doesn't stop there. Honey Love, you know, has way more than bras. They've got incredibly comfortable shapewear, tanks, leggings. I've got their um, shapewear panties that really, really suck you in and don't make you sweat too much because that's another thing I don't like is shapewear sometimes will make you sweat. But Honey Love doesn't do that. So Honey Love is not just supporting women. It's empowering women. Treat yourself to the best bras, best bras on the market and save 20% off at honeylove.com slash Pink shade. Okay, I'm going to tell you again. Best bras on the market. Save 20% off at honeylove.com slash pink shade. You're going to use that exclusive link, honeylove.com slash pink shade, and get your perfect fit. After you purchase, they're going to ask you, hey, where did you hear about us? Please support this show and say, I heard about Honey Love on Pink Shade. Honeys, you deserve this. Free the pain and discomfort and keep the support with Honey Love. Um, okay. This episode is called free Candace, which is a really <laughs> stupid title, by the way, really stupid. Well, it's, it, it was a stupid episode. Yeah. Okay. All right. Fair. Yeah. All right. Yeah. So we'll start with them, Andrew and Candace. So he's in Vegas at the jail. He's waiting on her and she comes out. She looks different in person than she, she looked pretty cute in her mugshots. She doesn't she, look quite as cute in person. 
Just and she looked completely different from that uh, ad that she put in looking oh, for yeah. a prison boyfriend. Like that was yeah. a Snapchat filter, obviously, yeah. that she used. Yeah. 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 So, um, so he's waiting or she comes out, they hug and kiss. And, you know, he's been there to see her a bunch of times. So it's not like the first yeah. time they've seen each other or anything. Mm -hmm. And she's like, I'm so happy. You know, it's like super overwhelming. And he grabs her box and her garbage bag. And um, this is where it would be great if I had a sponsor for suitcases because I could talk about suitcases, but I don't have a sponsor for suitcases. I've been trying to get one for years. Um, so he grabs her box and her garbage bag and in her talking head, she says when she was 19, she started getting in trouble. She lived a reckless lifestyle. She got in trouble for street racing. I mean, so she's like, she's hitting it different. She's, she didn't talk too much about the drugs, but here's what she's been arrested for street racing. Driving without a license, running from the cops constantly. She has an attempted possession of a stolen vehicle felony, residential burglary felony, and a regular burglary felony. She's been in jail six years total off and on, and she's 29 years old. So well, she was trying to be part of uh, Dom Toretto's crew. Fast and the Furious. Fast style. and the Furious. Yeah. Yeah, was, most definitely. So she does know something about cars. When she was like she specific does. about the kind of car she wanted. So mm -hmm. um, she realized that Andrew was the one she loved when she found out he loved her despite the mistakes she's made and the love she has for him. Endless, endless. Okay. I kind of believe her because now that I'm seeing her in person, I'm like, they are kind of. Matched. They are evenly yoked <laughs> as yes. far as yeah. the looks department goes because his ears go with her nose. Oh, wow. Wow, wow, wow. Okay. <clears throat> if you can so, make fun of his ears, I can make fun of her nose. Okay. So they mm -hmm. see the truck and he goes, here's your truck. It's the baddest truck for the baddest girl. And she goes, oh my God, thank you. I love you. I'm so excited. Now, remember somebody told us uh, on Facebook mm -hmm. or DM or something that that truck could be like $100,000. And I looked it Let's up it. just... Yeah, I just looked up spider, whatever, Dodge Durango, whatever Black it is. Mm -hmm. Uh huh. And it like starts at 70K. That is insane. Crazy. To me. That's crazy. That's I mean, crazy. For a truck. Why does I she mean, need a truck? Is she going to be moving furniture? Why does she need a truck? I'm sorry. If you are coming straight out of prison, you're going to get a used Ford Focus. For me and be and be thrilled. Just you got to drive it back and forth to work to the halfway house. That's all you need. She doesn't have a driver's yeah. license. That's a great point. That's a great point. That's a great point. Thank you. <laughs> what? Thank you. Thank you. Oh mm -hmm. my god! So she's excited about it, and so she was like, "They're walking over to it." And she goes, "I got to get a cigarette. Like I'm dying for a cigarette." And he's like, "Before your cigarette, let me do one thing." It's so romantic. And he gets down on his knee and he proposes and um, he says in his proposal, your mother came to me in a dream and I promised your mother I would take care of you. And she was like, oh, my God, I love you. Yes, I'll marry you, baby. Thank you. I love you. I'm the happiest okay, woman Megan in the world. Markle. I can't wait to marry you. I mean, she's over the top with it, but OK, listen, I mean, he, he did her like Meghan Markle did Prince Harry. Your mother came and spoke to me in my dreams. So it's meant to be. He told well, me. To okay. But what? Princess Diana is a known entity. Anybody could have no, her no, in no. a dream. Just, I, yeah. 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 That's true. Yeah. You're, yeah. Yeah. But it was still kind of using a person in a way. Let me really pull at you by using pull your dead mother. Yes, yes, absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. And then she says, you know, he's not the typical kind of guy I would go for, but it's his sweetness and his kindness and he's handsome in person. He loves me so much. And I really am excited about our future. Now, at this point, I believe her. I'm sure two more episodes I, I won't. Well, yeah. and this is the first time that we have heard her actually talk about him, everything else has been, I'm so excited about my truck. I'm so excited about my apartment. Nothing yeah. has been about him, period. You're right. I, I mean, we mm. haven't even really heard her say his name until now. Right. You're right. You're right. So, so she's going to this halfway house called Well Care, and she has to check mm -hmm. in by three. Now, we don't know if it's nine in the morning or what. 
and she's she wants to sit on the um the back bumper of the truck there and she says um she explains she goes i have to go there i have to go to well care i have to prove that i've completed the program and prove that i'm doing what i'm supposed to do for like 20 or 30 days and she goes you know i told them i signed up for 14 days and i have everything lined up with a place to live but they said because of my past addiction issues which we didn't know about. They said, mm -hmm. I have to do well care to be sure I don't backslide. And if I don't do it, it's an automatic revocation and I have to serve all our time. Like they threatened me with that. I was like, do the 20 or 30 days instead of the 14 days. Who gives a shit? It's just, That's it's, what just I would do. it's just preparing you. It's a, it's a step, you know, it's a step between the places to learn how to live. To, I mean, we've seen it all the time. They go right into an apartment. They don't know what to do. She's been in prison. She doesn't know what to she do. She doesn't even know. How long has she been in prison? She says six years total, but I think this time was just a few years. But she's been in before. Like, she doesn't even know that, like, you can make an order at Target and just drive up and pick it up. She doesn't know. know about that. She doesn't know about DoorDash. I don't DoorDash. think she knows. She doesn't know we need that shit. It's a whole new goddamn world out here. I know. Yeah, you're she, right. She she needs a little bit of help and, and it's not like andrew is going to be here to help her he's going to be gone mm -mm, he's gonna and go i don't i don't trust that friend of hers no she seen she looked like a junior league mom but she sounded real shady. She's, <laughs> sounded real, she she sounds like she works at the strip club and she keeps the girls together like she whips yeah. them into shape yeah mm -hmm. she tells them it's five more minutes so you got to hit the stage and like she'll punch them in the eye if they're late or something <laughs> oh, like that God, yeah. that's what she seems like punch them in the <laughs> eye they call her big, they call her big mama or something like that that's what she seems like that bitch don't play uh, oh that's so funny um and he says um well do you think once you get there at three and you check in will you be able to leave after that or what and she goes mm -hmm. i really don't know i'm not sure until i get there and he goes look the important thing is, is you're free right now and we'll do what we have to do. Like it's 14 days or 30 days, like who cares? So she sits on the tailgate and he says, I just want to show you, like, here's the handbag I got. And for the people saying it's not real, it was a, it's a real bag. You can tell by the way it folds and falls. And it's a used bag from the real real. He gives her her phone. She's all excited. She's like, I love it. The blingy case. He gives her her sunglasses. He gives her this wallet. And then she goes, it's so overwhelming. And he goes, let me know. Like, let me know if it's too much. I want you to be comfortable. So he at least is aware of the fact yes. that all of this can be too much. Now, yeah. he's like kind of got his hands on her legs while they're talking. And then she says, you know, I'm looking over to, this is what she says in her confessional. I'm looking forward to starting over again. I'm fresh, sober, I'm free. And it wasn't ever my intention to be financially supported by Andrew. But, you know, he sent me money without asking. And like, I was like, great. Now I can buy like a pillow and some sheets because I couldn't afford that. And he's like, well, what else do you need? She goes, so he just helped me at that point with anything I needed. And he's a great guy, but mm -hmm. I'm really not used to affection. I'm used to being mistreated. I'm not used to being loved in this way. And it's awkward for me. And I know I have to get over traumas um, to be a part of a new relationship. So some people I saw on the internet are like, oh, this is just her way of like putting him off. So she doesn't have to sleep with him and stuff. But I kind of believed her because she was using like therapy talk. Like I have to get over traumas of my past in order to be a part of this relationship. Cause I'm not used to somebody being nice to me. So yeah, I'm going to go with the people on the internet. Okay. All right. You know me. Cause mm -hmm. I don't think that she's attracted to him you don't mm -mm. okay um, i don't know i kind of have high hope. i know it's i know listen i know i'm gonna be disappointed but i always like pick out somebody i'm like i kind of have high hopes for them at the beginning and this is not her first time seeing him either right right so to to me she would be saying these things if this were her first time being around him right like trying to so play she, it off like yeah so she has probably been been able to hold his hand. I'm sure they've had those prison pictures taken together where they stand in front of that weird like background that they paint on a wall. The beach. With yeah. the beach and shit that the prisoner can't see for like 12 years until they are released. Yeah. So she terrible. has seen him. She has touched him. This is bullshit. She's totally oh. using this guy. She is ready for him to get on back to new jersey yeah yeah i don't i don't want to believe it's true but she did seem sincere 
Okay. She did. We'll see. Okay. We'll see. You know what? It's probably somewhere in the middle. Somewhere in the middle. Yeah. Yeah. I think yeah. we have seen a clip of what's coming up and she's like, I'm just so overwhelmed with like with being out and all the, having to jump into a relationship. And I don't know if she was saying it to him or somebody else, but I believe it was her. Um, all right. Let's jump over to Tinny and Rob. And I can't. I got to tell I, you. I can't. These kids are Great the kids. best kids we've ever had on, oh. on this show. Like they, they Great. get all tens. They're so smart. They're so sweet. They're so understanding. I think they're good looking kids on top of that. Yeah. Yeah. Their mom ain't got no sense, but you know why? Did you notice it? You no. haven't noticed it. I've, she's what? What? The fucking part. Oh. She's got a right side part. Mine's on the, I always, whenever you say that, I'm like, oh, mine's on the left. Yes. That's where it's supposed to be. She got oh. a right side part. That's why she ain't right all the way. We saw on Seeky Sister, uh -huh. mm -hmm. Sister Wife this week. Seeky Sister Wife this past episode that was just out. And okay. we recapped it over on Pink Shade Prime. The sister mm -hmm. of mm -hmm. Becky. There's Becky and Justin are the newest couple. Uh, the newest couple. And it, her dad was like a cult leader. And they're in mm -hmm. their 40s. She's got six kids. And she like bullied him into marrying her when she was like, 14 and he was like 18. Like it's, cra they're crazy. But so mm. she, they're looking for a sister wife and her sister-in-law was sitting on the bed talking to her when she was trying on outfits and she turned mm. her head to the side, Keisha. And her part was like a line <laughs> straight across her ear that flipped over like a Donald Trump. When I tell you, I screamed and I sent it to Meredith and I go, this part question mark. And she thought I meant like, is the person playing a part? She go, whose part? I go, look at the picture, this girl's part in her hair. And she went back. She said, I threw my phone. I, I, that girl turned and her head, it was a line across the side in a full flip. We were like, what is happening? And it was on the right side. Parts play an important role in mm. a person's behavior. Like I guess I truly, they do truly yeah. believe it. And when I saw where her, the side of her part, I was like, oh, that explains a lot. That explains why she's got 1,500 cameras in her home mm -hmm. so that her prisoner boyfriend can see what she's doing. But that she's so cute. Tinny is so cute. Oh, you I You can think be she's... cute and crazy. Well, that's true. That's yeah. true. Mm -hmm. So she sits with the kids. It's like kids and they're playing like Xbox or something. Mm -hmm. And she goes, I got to talk to you. And, they, and they're like, we knew it. And then yeah. they the remote. And we know you had to talk about something because the cameras are here. What do you yeah. want to say? And she goes, I want to talk to you about daddy. Now, we don't like oh, that when you no have. We don't. No, we don't. I understand mm -hmm. you've seen these the dad a lot because you've been up and down that road. But yeah. she says, I have to talk to you about daddy. You know, he was supposed to be coming home soon, but now it's going to be two months later. She doesn't explain to them about the not being on probation thing, but it's like they already know because she's like, yeah, it's going to actually be good in the long yeah. run because then he'll be able to go to Florida. But it's like they took that chunk out. Um. The, yeah, because they got it. They understood it. So it's just like they didn't show it to us or something. Right. Because I was like, they're little. Seems like you want to explain that. But maybe she, maybe they explained it off camera. But she says it's going to be two months later. But he won't be here for Cheyenne's birthday. But he will be here when we go to Florida for your birthday. Mm -hmm. So the little boy, Nehemiah, who is so cute with his little double diamond earrings, even though he's 10. Yeah. Um, yeah. He says, we toughed out five years. I mean, what's two more months? And she yeah. goes. That's a great attitude. And he goes, I got two more months to get stronger so I can beat him up. He's like, just so cute. Um, And then and she may really have to beat him up at some point, too. I, I mean, mean, we don't know. We don't know what Rob is about. Yeah. I was like, I think that's cute because he's kind of trying to be like, I'm like manly. I don't know. I'm the man of the house. I'm the man of the yes. house. Yeah. Ten. Mm -hmm. So she reassures Cheyenne. She goes, look, I just want to let you know, like, I'm here for you. We're going to still have our girl time. We'll still go get our manis and petties and we're still going to be able to do that if that's your concern. And Cheyenne says, look, we know that we're going to have to allow time for him to adjust and get used to things. Like, I mean, I was like, these kids are amazing. So smart. It's like they need to teach their mom. But she's done something right. Because they are. She has. Yeah, yeah she has. Yeah. She has. Unless the grandmother that we meet later on. Yeah. Has more of an influence on the kids. Yeah. Than the mom or something. Because. I mean, these kids are so smart. They get it. And then for their mom to be so. Maybe she's, she's just dumb in this situation. Yeah. 
Yeah. Well, a lot, that's what we get a lot on the show. The people are just seem to be really, really smart, but just dumb in this situation. Yeah. Um, Rob says um, from prison, Rob tells us, I'm a man and I'm a king and I no. take care of my whole household. No, I, the, Sir, you're in prison. Unless your name is T'Challa, <laughs> you are not the king. Unless your name is Charles, you are not the king. And even, even if your, your name are those, I'm still going to have an issue with calling you king. You are behind bars. You are the mm. king of nothing. You are the king of commissary. Like, you are king stop. of cell block too. That's what you're there the king you go. of. There you Good go. for you. Like, I hate that crap. I hate that too. I hate that yeah. too. He says, you know, I still love being in this relationship, you know, with my high school girlfriend, now my wife, but I've been in prison for 16 years and I know I'm about to get out and I'm, I'm both nervous and excited, but it really does scare me sometimes for sure. You know, it, yeah, you need to be scared of getting some money to get that tattoo covered up because you got two months to get it done. Two months to get it done. Yeah, you do. You better turn it into a sunflower, a UFO, a lion head. You better, you need to yeah. get to thinking <laughs> like really quick. A lion head would be easier. I think it would be easier. Just morph that girl's face so right too. into a lion head. Yeah. Oh, so Tenny's mom, whose name is Charlene, she comes over and she looks says, just like Tenny. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And the little boy looks just like Tenny too. Yes. Um, and she says, um, today I'm going to go shopping with my mom. We're going to do some retail therapy. Like if I get upset with Rob, sometimes that's what I do. And what, when mom walks in the kitchen, she puts those uh, cameras back in the drawer. She didn't want Rob to hear what they're she saying. She did. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And she says, um, yeah, we're going to go, uh, leave your purse here. Cause we're going to spend Rob's money. And mom's like, okay, great. Yeah. I don't, fine with me. Yeah. So then, uh, Rob tells us again from prison, I am an alpha male. I am a sole provider. I per financially provide for Tenny and the children. And I have a few sources of revenue. You know, I sell shoes, and uh, I play poker and I always come away with like a thousand dollars, but you know, God, she's, she's kind of become a spoiled brat. And sometimes I'll say like, give me a bank account update and she won't give it to me. So I go right on over to the poker tables. So I guess the selling shoes is the business with his brothers. They like resell Nikes and stuff, I guess, or he's got a Montana Mills shoe line. I don't know. Well, then he ain't making any money if he's doing the whole Montana Mills <laughs> thing, like at all. So, okay, so there's a such thing as reselling Nike shoes, like. Oh my God, my uh, a friend of mine's son who now has a very successful vintage T-shirt business where he like okay goes out with rock bands, and it'll be like behind backstage with them and show them like thirty vintage T-shirts, and the rock bands will like pick out what they want and buy them. And they're all like five hundred dollars, but they Holy source shit. all these vintage T-shirts, and, and they have like the year they came out and everything. There, but before that, when he was in high school, he mm -hmm. ran like a resale business, and it was all tennis shoes. It was all like high end sneakers that he would source from somewhere else and then get them cleaned up or fixed and then resell them. He had a huge business. Okay. The kid has always been an entrepreneur, but the, the online shoe business is huge. There's that whole website, the goat. They would sell tennis shoes. Never My son's always it. like, you got to go on the goat and we've got to find these shoes. I'm like, who, who, who am I buying? I'd like to go to Nike.com. I don't, I don't want to go to the goat. Where are these coming from? What is this? Yeah. It's a whole thing. I didn't, I never heard of that. Scholars never really been into shoes like that. Yeah. And you know, so damn. Okay. Hopefully that's what he's doing. I hope the sneaker business is what he's doing now. It's, I don't know how much he's doing from prison. It seems like his brother's doing a lot of the work since he's not in prison. Unless the brother is in prison. Like we don't know. We don't know. Maybe. Yeah. Uh, uh. So they go to this cute store and they're like, oh, Cheyenne would really love this store. And um, the mother says, you know, I, I don't know Rob directly yet. Like mm -hmm. I haven't met him in person yet. Um, I, maybe she went around when they dated in high school or whatever. She goes, so right. I do wonder how the kids are doing with him going to come home and everything. And Tini says, mostly, you know, Shy is worried about getting their girl time and stuff. And mom says, I'm worried about that too. I'm not, I'm worried. I'm not going to get enough time with you and the kids when he comes home because it's going to be different. Right. And then she cries. She's like, why are you crying? And mom says, I'm just really worried things are going to change. And then I liked the mom said uh, in the uh, stand up outside to the producer. She says, I don't think it's going to be the fairy tale she thinks it is. Yeah. You know, my, my daughter thinks of everything in a sweet and nice way, you know, but like the cameras around the house, that's not a normal thing. Thank you. And she says, yes. you know, 
Um, and then she cries and says, you know, I just think of it as a failure on my part because I was a single mom with her and I wish I could have given her more time and done better as a mom. Well, I think right. she's done a great job because Tenny has also raised some great kids. So I Excellent think Excellent kids. somewhere along the line, like it's a little bit like um, Rick and Samantha. And then like they remember the idea of this person from high school. Yes. And they're like, oh, we'll just overlook the fact they're in prison, you know? I mean, there's something, I mean, I can overlook like a mold on your back. I can mm. maybe overlook like a nose hair or two, but I can't overlook prison. I just can't no. do that. That's a big one. That's pretty big. Yeah. I don't know. What'd you, what'd you do to get there? Like you did something bad yeah. to get there. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Legally, the government doesn't trust you yeah. and had to put like, you in prison. Hey, <laughs> yeah. Like you had to get handcuffed. <laughs> yeah. To take you to prison in a prison van. That's big. Yeah. So Rob again and his third talking heads tells us he's king of the family. Now he's had three talking heads where he's <sighs> told us what a king and a god he is of his own household that he's never been to. So and, what are you willing to bet right now? Uh -huh. If they are on Love After Lockup, uh -huh. we're gonna see him at least four times with a t-shirt on that says King. Oh yeah. Yeah, I'm surprised she didn't pick him up in a t-shirt that said queen, but I feel like she's a little classier than that. I do. I don't feel like well, she would wear the king and queen t-shirts. Let's see when he gets out what she's going to do. That's yeah. true. Mm -hmm. So he tells us he's king of the family and he does want a woman that's more submissive. And, you know, he doesn't always get that from Tinny. He says, I just tell her she should sit down and be cute over there. And I, I got everything else. But no, she said she's not going to sit down and be cute. You know, she says... She, she should have the same voice in the relationship as I do. But, you know, she's not going to be submissive as uh, I want her to be like, I don't know, that could crash our relationship. Well, are you just not bringing this up? What are you talking about? All right, y'all. Our family loves Tropical Smoothie Cafe. When I tell you we are there at least three times a week, it is the kids' favorite thing to do after school is to go and get those smoothies. There's Bahama Mama, there's Island Jetty, there's Kiwi Quencher. These are the things that we live on in this house. They've got these new summer mocktail smoothies, though, that you need to know about, okay? We've got Island Punch Smoothie. This has peach, guava, passion fruit, mango, and pineapple. But the one I'm excited about is the Mango Berry Cosmo Smoothie. It has mango, strawberries, cranberry and lime there's also a watermelon mojito smoothie that my husband is going to get we're going this week watermelon mint strawberries and lime delicious delicious so the mocktail smoothies are just here for a limited time so you gotta get one and sit on your pool deck and really really enjoy it they also have these delicious bowls now normally what i get a tropical smoothie is the turkey bacon ranch but they now have these acai bowls that look incredible they have one with yogurt and berries Gosh, they look so good. I'm so excited about this. Matter of fact, Ingrid and I are going on Wednesday to meet at Tropical Smoothie for our business lady business meeting. Because, you know, we're on Tropic Time now. Visit one of Tropical Smoothie Cafe's 1,400 plus locations and order online or through the app. And let me know what you get. How much more submissive can you be than to have 13 cameras in your house at all times and you're seeing exactly what I'm doing, what I'm saying, when I go to the restroom, what I'm eating? Huh? I mean, oh, the fact that she's like sitting in her bedroom talking to her girlfriend, trying on clothes, and he's like, who's that? That would scare the shit out of me. <laughs> I would never go to that person's house again. I wouldn't either. I'd be like, unless oh, those cameras get put in a drawer, I'm not, I'm not doing this. No, I would feel completely. First of all, I don't know if I would talk to that friend anymore because like clearly there's something wrong with you that I didn't never knew about you. Because that's just. Yeah, weird. it's one thing to have them up when if it's just like it, it like you want to like chat and it's like a FaceTime or whatever. But just have them up all the time, all the time. That's I weird. It's weird. Yeah. Um. So now we get Rick and Samantha. OK, so. Uh, Rick is going over to his cousin, no, no, his niece's house, Diana. Now, Diana and Veronica. Now, I can't decide if Diana and Veronica are sisters or if Diana is the mom of Veronica. I thought they were cousins. They, well, because he says his nieces, but Diana looks yeah. so much older than Veronica. Diana looks all practically his age. I mean, not all. I don't know if age. they're sisters. I mean, I wonder if it's like mother and daughter. He just goes, these are my nieces. Like niece and great niece or something. Oh, maybe. 
Maybe. Anyway, I don't know. No shade to Diana. She seems lovely. Um, so he's having breakfast with them and he's like, yeah, I went to the reunion. I had fun. And so Veronica goes, oh, show me some pictures. So he's showing her the pictures and he goes, she goes, oh my God, a text just popped up from Sandy. And he was like, what? And she goes, oh, my gosh, it says, she goes, I haven't seen you since the reunion. And we see the picture of Sandy was the blonde one. And of course, then he says, um, yeah, you know, Carol, she was a list, little disappointed to find out I was engaged. Then we see him talking to Carol, who they called CD. She was the short mm -hmm. brown hair. And he says, yeah, you know, I am engaged to Samantha, but she's in Idaho. And he doesn't say she's in prison. She, he just says she had a few DUIs. And uh, Carol says, you ain't nobody if you ha hadn't had at least one. <laughs> what's happening These in this town? People, what's I going on? don't. What's happening on this season? Because everyone seems to think that is not a big deal to have a DUI. It's fine for her to be in prison because she's had like six felony DUIs. It's fine. Ayana thinks it's not a big deal to have a DUI. Carol well, doesn't she's, think she's, it's a big Ayana's deal. Ayana's offended by the whole idea. Ayana is, yeah, how dare she you? She doesn't think it should be a law at all. No. Mm -mm. I, I, I mean, she should be able to do what she mm -hmm. wants. Uh, so the nieces say, so I mean, Diana and Veronica, the nieces are like, so everybody knows you're engaged. She told everybody. And um, he goes, yeah, I did. And then they laugh and they go, now how many times has Samantha been married? And he goes, four. But that last one might get annulled. And Veronica laughs her ass off. It was like, I guess five times the charm because this will be his third marriage. Well, and then he acts like the, that last one didn't matter. He goes, that one, that one failed. Well, they all failed, but <laughs> they all still happened. <laughs> He's trying to say four, but if the last one gets annulled, it'll just be three. So she's only one ahead of me instead of two ahead of me. We're talking about that's marriages. Still, that's, that, yeah. that's a lot of marriages right there, buddy. That's, that's a, lot. a lot. She's only like 53. Yeah. So, um, Samantha calls her and, you know, you've got a call from an inmate, blah, blah, blah. And Hold he on, says, I have a question for you. At yeah. what point did I hear someone say dick pic? You did hear that. Who, you did hear where that. Where did that come from? That, that Was that a text message that came through that said, where's my dick pic? Did yeah. Sandy say that? Either Sandy said that. Or he, he said something like, I, okay, you're right. I heard it, but it was like, where's my dick pic? It was at, okay, so it may have been Sandy said that. It seems like he was looking at his phone to be like, oh, I got to find my dick pic to send her. Do you know what I mean? That's what I heard that as. But it, since it made no sense to me, I didn't even write it down because I was like, I didn't. And it was so quick. But like, maybe, maybe he's, maybe he read what Sandy said. Like, where's my dick pic? LOL. That's what I was thinking. She's a dirty girl. Sandy. Nasty. Stop mm. it, girl. And CD's out here thinking it's no big deal to get a few DUIs. Um, so no. Samantha calls and he goes, well, I did. I told everybody at the reunion we were engaged. And she goes, well, I'm relieved about that. And I appreciate that. And Veronica says, well, how do you feel, you know, that you guys are engaged? And she goes, I feel like, you know, it was always meant to be. We had to find our way back to each other and we got to make up for lost time. He really gives me a calmness and a peace. And Veronica's like, oh, my God, he's crying. And he's like, yeah, he was crying. He thought that was really I, sweet. Yeah. Do you think that? he, I don't know what to think of Rick. I think he's a people pleaser. And I think he wants, he wants Sandy and CD to still think he's like cute and fun and cool. Okay. Um, and he wants to tell Samantha what she wants to hear. I think he's a uh -huh. people pleaser. I think he's trying to make everybody happy. And so he feels so touched that Samantha said that, but at the same time, like, She's not going to like it when she sees on TV that he was flirting with these women and finding out that oh, he's been calling no. them all these years. And yeah. that Samantha requested a dick pic, even though she knows Sandy. Yes. 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 Sandy better watch out. Sandy's the horned up Arizonan. That's what she is. And so, Samantha looks like she'll cut a hoe. Yes, she does. Yes. She on does. probation or not. Yes, she does. Mm -hmm. So, um, 
Okay. So then he, then she goes, are you, you're going to figure out how to come here in December? And he goes, you know, I want to, but the finances are tight. Like I want to. And she goes, listen, I'm not taking no for an answer. You know, it looks like you've been out shopping a lot. He goes, no, I mean, just for necessities. And then she goes, well, when you get here, like I, I'm running out of coffee, like I'm running out of lotion, like I need things. So when they hang up, Veronica says, um, for somebody who's in prison, um, seems like she shouldn't be judging you for what your finances are. Like maybe she thinks she caught herself a sugar daddy. And, and clearly goes, she didn't. No, he is broke as a joke. I don't I know, know why he's 58. Why can't he work? Why can't he just go work at TJ yeah, Maxx yeah. or something? I was thinking the same thing. I'm sorry because women don't like broke men. I'm like, Samantha, you may need to go back on that website and find someone else because, I mean, he can't afford to move there. He can't even fucking afford to come visit you. Like, but, how but are I mean, y'all going to make it? Why did he retire so early? I mean, he could literally go and like work at that rec center where he played pickleball. I mean, just get a job just to have a little bit of income coming in. He's too early. He's too young. Want to. He's too young to be retired. Yeah, I would think he would be bored. Maybe that's why he's so like fragile. He needs something to do. He's got too much time to just sit around and think. Cause he is yeah. fragile. He he is fragile. And I, I mean, he could even go work at like a rehab center. Like that's what Lindsay does, Something. you know, and that would be like giving back, but also maybe making a little money, you know? Cause he clearly needs the money. He needs the money. So yeah. A remi uh, Veronica reminds us that she's a corrections officer and she goes, you know, mm -hmm. I see this happen all the time about people begging to get money on their books and it never ends well. It never ends well. So now we see Rick in the car and he's talking to Samantha while he's driving because um, he's going to play pickleball. And she's like, um, are you coming to see me? Are you coming? And he goes, I'm really trying to figure it out, but I just don't know. And she goes, you know, I don't know if you're really into this. Like, are, do you want to get married? Do you want to stay a bachelor? He's like, why are you saying that? You know, I'm trying to figure it out. I looked it up, Keisha. It is 14 hours to drive from Gilbert, Arizona to East Boise, Idaho. That is a two day he drive. can do that. He can do that, especially he's retired. He got nothing else to do. But I'm just saying it's not like a four hour drive. So it is, it does require some planning. It does. And I get that, but he's probably thinking he can't afford the gas. He can't afford mm -hmm. the motel because he ain't staying in a hotel. That's for damn sure. Yeah. But he keeps saying, I'm going to figure it out. Fucking get a part time job and then you can figure it out. Yeah. I don't understand but why he just, just doesn't I don't get a think little he job. He doesn't want to work. He doesn't want to work. I guess so. It's, it's, we need more on that. We need more as to why he doesn't yeah, just get else. a part time job. I mean, he could be a greeter at Walmart. I mean, you know, so. Something. So he says, um, yeah, you know, we have spent very little time physically together and I need time on this marriage situation. You know, I never thought I'd be getting married for a third time. And also my ex gets mm -hmm. part of my pension. Okay. So there's another problem. That explains that. Yeah. That explains that. Yeah. And he says, I just want to take my time with this whole thing with Samantha. Like, I don't want to make a mistake. It's just a couple of months till she gets out. So he meets up with his buddy, Dan for pickleball. And Dan is giving him uh, the business about yes, his is. girlfriend and everything else. Mm -hmm. And he goes, Oh God, you know, Samantha has been giving me a real hard time about coming to see her, but financially it's hard. And I don't even know, God, I don't even know if I want to do this now. Like I've been single for 14 years. I never had to answer to anybody. And Dan says, okay, rapid fire question. Answer me right away. Do you want to marry her? Answer me truthfully. Go. And he goes, yeah, dude, I do, man. She's the one bro. He's got but real bro real, mm -hmm. real quick, real quick. But I don't know if I believed him. Did I don't you? know because the, the sentence before that, he was like, I've been single for 14 years. Yeah. I've been, I've been able to call Sandy and CD in the middle of the night and bang it out in a parking lot. Yeah. I, I don't know if I believed him, just like I don't believe he knows how to play pickleball from what I saw. <laughs> that was bad. It looked like it looked like I was out there trying to play. <laughs> Dan killed him. Um, and uh, Dan goes, well, then you need to go there and see her. Get yeah. the ball rolling. But no, I'm not lending you any money. Don't ask for a loan. And he laughed. And that's exactly, what I, that's exactly what I would have said, too. Because when you tell a friend, like, you try to encourage them, the next goddamn they, they, thing they do is ask you for money. Like, don't ask me for money. Don't. No. I'm not giving you 100 mm -hmm. bucks for gas. Don't even ask. I'm not doing it. Nope. Um, and in talking to Hattie, he said, you know, she builds me up. She's so good for me. You know, I really do believe she's the one. So I don't know. I don't know. Well, if All she's right. building him up, she is building him up with fucking toothpicks. 
<laughs> rude he because is fragile he is just, you're right he's, yeah he's struggling like he's I'm, right on I'm the edge scared he's gonna start bad drinking i know it's a little it's a little walk out i want to whisper it all right it's a little worrisome all right speaking to drinkers let's go to joey and michael um <laughs> Okay, so Joey goes to meet with Minerva, who's big on the LGBTQIA scene, and she writes a sex column, and she's Mm -hmm. big in the nightlife, and that's how Joey met her. And he tells Minerva that Michael's been in prison for six months on drug charges, and he goes, it's hard to date someone in prison. Like, the intimacy part is not there. And he says, and I don't know, like, he always wants me to do dirty talk, and I'm like, my parents are in the room, and it's so weird, and I don't know how to do it. And Minerva goes, yeah, your parents are in the room and you're on a call probably being recorded. So I could see where that would be uncomfortable. And he says, but do you have the thoughts in your mind? And he says, yeah. And he goes, you need to, when you're alone, practice saying it out loud to see how it feels. And um, he goes, you know, I just fear like I might think something that I think is hot. And then Michael will be like, what the hell? This is weird. And Michael one time told me like I had bad blowjob skills. And Minerva's like, oh, goodness. <laughs> okay. Let's. Okay. 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 When he said that, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I was all confused at it. Right. Not confused. Confused at it. Okay. Because in my head. Yeah. In my head. Mm-hmm. No, to pun, me, not, pun not intended in your head. Uh-huh. Go ahead. Yeah. <laughs> A man should be able to give another man the best blowjob ever. Because he knows what to do. He knows yeah. what to do. Yeah. So I would, I would think that would never, ever, ever, ever be a problem because a man knows what another man would like. That's what I would think. But he doesn't know. Well, he's he's just wrong. because because he's just such a late bloomer, you know, and he just, you know, had all those addiction issues and stuff. And he's just a late bloomer. It's just well, a late he's bloomer. had his dick up before. Oh, my God. Um, so Stop it, Virgin Mary. Stop that. <laughs> Stop that right now. This is very uncomfortable. So Stop being uncomfortable. We're two women of a certain age. James called me a woman of a certain age the other day. He almost got knocked the fuck out. I bet he, he did. did that. Yeah. He almost Remind did. him how young and youthful you are. Yeah. I try to. We are we are full grown women. We can say that we're because fellatio is just icky to me. Yeah. So we're gonna call it what it really is. Yes. It's say a blowjob. It. It's a blowjob. I said it already. I said it. So that's right. what you want me to call it too? <laughs> you can call it whatever you want. I'm saying blowjob. Huh? I don't Feel. like fellatio. Ugh. I know that sounds so ugh. I don't yeah. know. Yeah. But I also feel as though if a man is sucking another man's dick, that man can say, do that more. Yes. Do this, do that. I like this. I like that. Yes. Just yeah. like they tell women. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. Yes. I, yeah. I think a man would catch on quicker. So, yeah, so I don't know, but Minerva maybe tells him, die. I, yes, I don't know. I, I think you see, he's such a late bloomer and he just had so many years where he was in his addiction and wasn't like doing anything sexually with anybody because he was a meth addict or whatever. Um, and he says, um, he goes, but he does have a nice dick. So I'll say that and Minerva goes, well, you need to work on those skills. And here's, if you work on those skills, then you won't have to do the dirty talk. And he, and Minerva goes, you've got two hands. You can use a lot yes. of saliva, keep a steady yes. pace. It's a two way mm-hmm. street. You know, you have yes. to get, you have to get. Yes. And then he says, but be careful because, you know, Michael is probably somebody who hasn't grown up since he started struggling with addiction around age 24. And then they, you know, bring up the point of you are kind of the age you are when you started being an addict or when you went in prison and in Michael's case, both. Support for today's episode comes from One Skin. And if you have sensitive skin, you're going to want to hear about their scientifically proven topical supplements, free from over 1,500 chemicals and preservatives that can make skin red, irritated, itchy, 
Ugh. Their products are all safe for sensitive skin. And it's just one of the reasons they've earned the Skin Safe seal of approval. You guys, I've been using the OS1 face topical supplement and the OS1 eye topical supplement. You guys, I really think it's making a huge difference. And I'm kind of regretting that I'm not doing before and after pictures. I'm really going to buy this week the OS1 body topical supplement because I'm like, maybe it could help me out with these like, you know, sunspots on my legs and things like that. It could really smooth it out. They have a team of um, female scientists. So we love that all female scientists, their products are backed by extensive lab and clinical data. It's just like way, way smarter than anything I can even grasp. They have validated their efficacy and safety on all skin types. Their topical supplements are the easiest way to keep your skin healthy and hydrated without those harsh ingredients and irritation found in other skincare products. Believe me, I've had that problem where I'm like, hey, I thought it looked great. And the next day, something horrible has happened to my skin. But that has not happened with these products because they are top notch from some super, super smart people. Because what they do is, okay, they what you do with most skincare products, they treat the symptoms rather than the root cause of aging. And what One Skin has been doing is they did all this lab research. They were able to measure the efficacy of age reversal molecules in their lab. Again, you guys, I told you it's like super, super smart. Their scientists found that this OS1 peptide reverses skin's biological age. And in a third-party 12-week clinical study performed by third-party research organization, OS1 Face, which is what I've been using, was clinically proven to strengthen the skin barrier, improve skin health markers, and diminish visible signs of aging. Wrinkles were diminished by 87% of users. Guys, that is huge. So One Skin is the world's first skin longevity company. By focusing on the cellular aspects of aging, One Skin keeps your skin looking and acting younger for longer. Get started today with 15% off using code PINKSHADE at oneskin.co. That's 15% off at oneskin.co with code PINKSHADE. After you purchase, they'll say, hey, where did you hear about OneSkin? And you're going to say Pink Shade. Please support this show by telling them we sent you. And again, I'm going to order that body stuff this week. Thanks, guys. And yes. Joe, yeah, when he gets out, I definitely don't want to have to be like looking after him and being his mom and being his addiction counselor and all that. And he was like, no, that's not hot. That's not hot. But that's what he's going to have to do. Yeah. And because he's older and everything else, so he just falls into that yeah. category. Um, and he does say like Michael is a lot more sexually experienced than him. So that's a concern. So now he goes to a hotel room to do the video visit and he brought some lube in case things get going. Well, we've already been I, told. I, these video visits are like 15 minutes. Well, I didn't understand this at all. What was his plan with the I don't, lube? I don't know. I don't know. Is he going to like whip it out and lube himself up on the camera when anybody could walk behind him and see it? That's what I was wondering. I'm like, there's no way that Joey is going to do this. Like, can you even do this? What if a prison guard passes by? Also, there are two cameramen and a producer in the room with you. Like, what are we doing here? Well, we've they've seen a lot. They've seen a lot. We know they, they need they, hazard pay. They yeah. don't think they even care anymore. No. But what was he going to do with all that? I don't know. He had the lube, like, right next to the computer. I was like, what's happening? Um, I, I, I don't so, know. I don't know either. I don't know either. But the, it's only 15 minutes. I think he can do a 15-minute video in, like, a... 30 minute phone or 20 minute something. So he says, he so it, been warmed up before the video call even started. No, he should have like popped on their neck or something. So they're getting, what I really done. they're getting ready for their sexy time hotel room phone call. And now Michael has a full mustache. We're like how long has it been since we see Michael that all of a sudden he's grown a full mustache? What? <laughs> so he tells Michael about his meeting with Minerva and he says, you know, I'm going to try and not be so uptight. Like I really listened to what she had to say. And she told me I should watch amateur porn and see how those people act and see mm -hmm. if like that turns me on. I should act that way. And then he tells Michael he has wet dreams about him. I was like, dude, do, do grown men have wet dreams? I thought that was a teenage boy thing. It's a lot to unpack with these two. A lot, a lot of details, a lot of, a lot of yeah. fluid talk. A lot of fluid it talk. really was a lot. 
Yeah. yeah. Unfortunately, none of it had anything to do with the lube that was on the bed. That was a fluid. That lube, didn't... That lube just sat there. It was weird. So yeah. then uh, quickly, Michael changes the subject and yeah. because Joey's ready with his lube and he's all ready. But then Michael goes, hey, a friend of mine saw you on a hookup app. And, you know, I thought we weren't doing that. And he goes, mm -hmm. um, I wasn't. Maybe I was on there like my profile was open because I was trolling your site. And Michael goes, um, I hope you're not, you know, I hope you know that I'm not doing anything or hooking up with anybody in prison. Like you're my guy. And Joey's like, I mean, no, but I mean, I think you did ask me to go on there to pull some pictures probably when they were trying to get that fake picture Yes, um, of uh -huh. the two of them. So I think I went onto your account to get fake pictures and, um, you know, if the friend saw him, maybe that's why I was on there. I don't know. And then he was like, but like, what if I was on the site? Like, who cares? My boyfriend's in prison. Like, what do you want me to do? I was like, this is yes. what we need from you, Joey. We need you to yes. stand up for yourself. Yes. Yes. You have the advantage. You're on the outside, you know, because I'm sorry. No one who I can do that to or do that to <laughs> is going to tell me what the fuck to do at all. OK, I'm going to be on anything that I want to be on, period, point blank. So matter of yeah. fact, I'm going to actually have someone teach me how to give you a good blow job. So yes. when you get out, I'll know what to do there. Oh, my mm -hmm. God. All right. Well, we're going to end with Ayana and Jamal. And oh. um this is her sentencing day. So she's in the bathroom. She's doing her makeup. And um, Jamal calls. And they're talking about her court hearing. Now, you notice she has two phones. She has a pink one and a yellow one. She has two phones this whole episode. Two phones. And um, she was like, God, you know, I'm still thinking about you saying that thing about the two-year grace period. And he goes, I wasn't saying anything negative. I understood why you got upset. But financially, and I want to give you a wedding you deserve and not rush it. And we don't need to get married the minute I get out to prove anything to anyone. And um, she goes, okay, so can we uh, promise that there'll be no more surprise information, no more secret wives? He goes, I, this was over a decade ago. Like, what do you want me to do? Like, it's been, it's been, I've been in prison, you know? So now she joins a Zoom court call. Now, before this, I guess her daughter had woken up and so she was kind of doing with her daughter in the kitchen, you know, the kids too. So they will kick off real quick if you don't get, you know, and she is on the Zoom court call, but she's sort of in and out of the frame getting food for the daughter. So mm -hmm. they, the, we go outside and it says cameras were not allowed to film her Zoom court call. It's an hour later and we see Ayana doing what I told you. She's like, you know, slapping at her mm -hmm. phone. Sorry, phone. She's slapping at her phone. And she's like, <laughs> and throws the phone, phone, the yellow phone. And she tells, she says, that judge was so disrespectful to me. So disrespectful. And we see the transcript where the judge says, um, are we inconveniencing you? Because we could just, we could just schedule this for next week. And she goes, no judge, I'm a single mother and I'm trying to get my daughter some breakfast because she just woke up. And the judge says, Let's just push it to next week so you can come in person. Ay mm -hmm. Ayana goes, can I just feed my daughter? Can I just feed my daughter? And the judge goes, no, we are in court. This is a court proceeding. And Ayana right. goes, oh, okay. Well, she'll just be hungry then. Okay. Getting real snappy with it. And Something is wrong with her. Her anger is, it's so, it's so quick. Yes. And everybody's yes. disrespecting her. Yeah. And his, I think the, the judge is trying to say, this is a court proceeding. And if you were in the court yeah. proceeding, you could not be walking around and feeding someone. Feeding your you know, child. Sitting yeah. in this chair. So, yeah. and on the other hand, I understand she's like, I'm here by myself. I have to feed my daughter. But what you should have done is woken your daughter up 10 minutes before and get her fed in front of the iPad, plan it out, you know? Instead of being on the phone talking to Jamal. Yes. Right. Wake your kid up and feed her. But she was also trying to play I'm a single mom card as yeah. well. I'm yeah. surprised she didn't have the baby on her titty. Like, I'm breastfeeding my kid. I can't possibly go to jail, Your Honor. Look, I'm still breastfeeding my child. Yeah. She she tried to play the card, and, and it just didn't work either. Yeah. So Ayana gets off the phone, and she's going, bitch this and bitch that, and bitch, you can't feed your fucking kids. How about that, you fucking bitch, fucking hoe? I mean, talking about the judge, okay? The judge, yeah. And she asked the production to take off her mic. And then she takes Amira with her. And I was like, is she in the pantry? 
Or did she, is that a garage? Because that it's a small door. It's not a full-size yeah. door. It looked like a pantry yeah. door. It was, was dark like, she, in there. Did she just go and stand in the, is she hiding in the pantry? Like, this was so Look, weird. Mary Payne, I think we, I think we can conclude right now, this dumb bitch only has two brain cells and they both live in an ass cheek. Okay? That's it. That's all she's got. That's all she's got. She's not smart. She's got anger issues. Okay. Her maturity level, like, peaked at maybe 11th grade. Yeah. She just, all, she's got dick on the brain. All she is worried about is Jamal. That's it. Yeah. Yeah. I don't, yeah. I'm not going to say she don't care about her kids, but her kids are not like top priority. Yeah. Because to me, if I'm going to court, first of all, I'm probably not going to sleep that night. Yeah. I'm going to be up early. I'm going to get my kids situated. You could have got someone to watch her. Where's that girl that watches your kid all the time anyway? Why yeah. couldn't she watch her that day? Like, really? Yeah. Stop. Yeah. And then you're, yeah. you're, your attitude is why you got four years probation. Yes. All of it. All of it. Yeah. I don't know about if she's smart or not smart. I don't want to say that. I just think that she really does have Jamal on the brain. And she does obviously have some deep seated anger that she feels that the world is against her and nothing is her fault. And she just can't take responsibility. She does. She mm -hmm. needs to go back to that therapist. She needs to go twice a week. She, oh, she really does. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Yeah. And the days that she doesn't go like in person, she needs to like be reading books about anger management. She really does. She really has got to get to get to what's happening there. Yeah. So now her other phone rings and Jamal asks and <laughs> says, um, what happened? What happened? And she goes, well, I mean, so I got the 15 days, but now the judge is talking about four years of probation. And like, just because she's the judge, I got to kiss your ass to get a good sentence. And even if I get smart ass with you and he goes, yeah, you got to. Yeah. Your freedom's yeah. on the line, booby. And at yep. the end of the day, it's not about you. And yep. he said, you know, and she was like, but it's just not fair. And he said, facts on the table. Some of those people are dickheads mm -hmm. and they'll treat you like you're not human. And she's crying and she's bawling, crying. And she's like, this is insane. I'm so tired right now. And I'm so livid. And it's not fair to me. And she's crying. And you can hear Amira like knocking on the pantry door to get out. Like, <laughs> can somebody let me out of this pantry? Come on now. Come on. Like somebody get that baby out of that pantry. Because it's dark in there. Like I can, yes. it's, it was dark. There wasn't a light on in there. She was like hiding from production in the pantry. I mean, I was like, first I was like, okay, maybe she went to like, it's a downstairs, like a basement or something. Like there's like a rec room, but she was obviously standing right by that door. She was right there. She could have gone in her. her bedroom. Yes. And shut the door. She could have told production, you guys need to leave. She could have gone in the bathroom. Anything. She we've so seen her strange. go in the bathroom to yes. clap her butt cheeks. Yes. Like so many things could have happened here. But this is why I say she's not all there. Because she does she's, things like that. She's just she's just very overcome with her emotions. Very overcome. And so she says, you know, the issue really is at the end of the day, if I'm on probation, will that affect Jamal being able to come home to me? And that's, that's the point that she's making. When she heard the thing about the probation, she was like, I don't care if I have to serve 14 days, 75 days, 30 days. She just didn't want to be on probation because that could affect if Jamal could come and live with her if she's on probation. So now we got to the real point. Yeah. Never mind the fact that if I have to go to jail for 75 days and I don't see my children, I can't provide for my children who will keep my children. It's all about where, where will Jamal live? Yeah. If I have four years probation, I don't know, perhaps with his mom, Whoopi Goldberg, maybe one of his sisters, Flavor Flav. I don't know. He's got options. Maybe he can go live with one of his 17 baby mamas. I don't know. He will be OK. Worry about yeah. your children. Yeah. I just. Yeah. I mm, that little girl is so cute. I just want to your face she's so cute she's okay. a survivor she's gonna be okay <laughs> she is probably going to graduate law school at the age of 16 because she is she she has to take care of herself poor That's thing so she's so cute That's so oh my god um okay so this ooh, season ooh, on ooh. this is the best what? part of the show this is the best part of the podcast because we don't see the previews 
We, yeah. Was, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. This season on Love During Lockup, which means we're right at the halfway mark. Okay. Um, True is on the phone with Shantae. They're, you know, got the phone held out at a restaurant and some family, I think, I don't, can't tell if it's her daughter or her sister or somebody. And they go, why did you even propose to her? And he says, I can't answer that. And she does the, Whoa, what? Yeah. Okay. Okay. Um, Joey says, you know, I messaged Michael and told him I was in the emergency room. And then we see Michael going, I don't know. Like he feels like his whole life is falling apart or something. I don't know. So I don't know if that means like <laughs> Michael told him, like I might actually be in prison longer. And Joey had a panic attack. Like, I don't know. I don't know. But okay. Michael didn't have a lot of sympathy for whatever reason. Joey had to go to the emergency room. Right. Um, Andrew asked Candace, like, can you be in a committed relationship right now? And she's just like, I just have so many emotions. Like I'm so overwhelmed with being out. Okay. okay. Um, Rob gets out and Tinny and the kids jump out of the car and run to meet him. There he is. Um, the Ayana, king, the king, the king, the king, the king is here. Oh, the king is home. <laughs> Ayana says, um, I'm going to see my man. I don't care. And we see her crying in the car saying, fuck all this shit. Just take me home. I don't know. She She's outside of a correctional facility. So I don't know if she like tried to go see him and they wouldn't let her in or what, but maybe she didn't get to go in, but we don't know. We don't know. Oh, uh, Keisha, you're, you went black, but now you're back. Did you, you said I went black. <laughs> your, screen, <laughs> your screen went black. Your screen went black, but now you're back. Now I saw it. <laughs> that was weird. <laughs> um, that is the end of the episode. Now, here's what we're going to talk about next, everybody. Don't okay. leave, because we got we to tell you an announcement. So there's a wonderful show um, called Inmate to Roommate that is on A&E and it starts May 30th. So starting with the episode that will be June 3rd here on Mondays, we will be giving you like, here's what happened on episode one, episode one of Inmate to Roommate. Okay. Here's what happened. Then the next week, here's what happened episode two. But starting with episode three of inmate to roommate. We'll be recapping it here on the Monday spot. We'll, we'll do a little, here's what happened one and two. And then we'll start with three um, to fill this Monday spot while stupid mama June takes over our Don't love, do during that. Lo love during lockup spot. Yeah. That is so disrespectful. If you watch mama mm -hmm. June and you want to hear a recap of it, you go over to Keisha's podcast, the Libra lounge with Keisha. She likes to talk about it. Not me. No. It, it is sad because when they show the previews of that, they do show that that daughter is going to die. And that's terrible. Yes. That's terrible. Mm -hmm. It's really sad. Mm -hmm. So I'm sorry about that. Mama June, yeah. I don't care for, but the, the sister dying is very sad. Mm -hmm. um, so that is what's going to be in this spot when Love During Lockup ends, because they do this to us. They put Mama June in the middle. And then I guess we're going to get Love After Lockup next then life after mm -hmm. lockup, then love during, and then they just keep rotating it through like they do with the 90 day franchise. And I'm here for mm -hmm. it. I love these crazy prisoners. Me too. Um, yeah, I saw Taylor and Chance the other day. It was Taylor and Chance and Chance's new girlfriend. They were like all together at a concert. Why? Yeah, I saw that. I saw that too. I don't know. Taylor just. Taylor. They probably is... all live together. I know. And then I saw she also got in trouble for like, um, fines you know the city had given her a bunch of violations for her aggressive dogs they were like coming after people and also like the siding of her house and stuff falling off like her neighborhood had like she'd gotten a bunch of trouble in her neighborhood because of her house falling apart because of the work chance only did half of yeah yeah when you first said that she got in trouble i immediately thought it has to be like code violations for her house yes yeah. yeah it's that and the dogs are aggressive towards people <laughs> in the neighborhood yeah I just saw that. I was like, come on, Taylor. You got four kids. Come on. Including like a toddler. Yeah. I mean, baby. Is that baby? I guess that baby's a toddler now. Who knows? I guess they start toddling around around age one. Good grief. She's so pretty and she has so much potential. Come on, Taylor. Come on. Okay. Make, okay. Mary Payne. Make those epoxy okay. tables. Be an account manager. Do it. Come on, girl. Pull it together. You you, a... you 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 see her in a much better light than I do. <laughs> well, just That's, leave I know it there. That's... That's usually how it goes. Mm -hmm. um, everybody, for the rest of this week, what's coming up on Tuesday will be 90 Day Happily Ever After with 
Kimberly, her she's better. Her back is better this week. Oh, I will have yeah, I know, bless her. This week we'll have Meredith Constant coming on to talk about Bravo. I've got some other good Bravo guests coming up uh, for the Bravo segment. I'll have uh, Julie and Brandy next week. I'll have Brian Moyle in the week after that. We're going to continue Love During Lockup, and then we're going to add in that Inmate to Roommate starting on the June 3rd episode here, and then we'll roll right into that. And then also, don't forget over on Pink Shade Prime, I've got Seeking Sister Wife, which is wrapping up, and then we're going to add in, oh my God, sorry. It's balloons, guys, if you're on YouTube. Sorry, that's what happens if you do this. Um, we're going to add, when Seeking Sister Wife ends, we're going to add over on that level 90 Day UK. And then on the $10 level of Pink Shade Prime, we're covering Milf Manor, which Keisha had the thrill of watching when she was in bed with her lupus flare up. And she loves it. She loves Milf Manor. Right, It Keisha? literally made me want to smother myself with my own pillow. <laughs> <laughs> Like, okay. All right. But you, said, but you, but you I, kept watching it. But you kept watching it. I was, I was too weak to grab the remote. <laughs> it was stuck. Didn't you think it was sweet? Or maybe you haven't seen this yet. Maybe it hasn't. It would have aired by the time this comes out. But I don't know. I had a screener. But Miles and Stacy, the father son that had a problem. Oh my God, Keisha disappeared on me, guys. Let's see if she comes back. Let's see. I'll just do a little time. There she is. Hold on. Hold on, Keisha. All right. What will, will, will happen? No idea. Um, okay. Hold on. Let me just make a little time stamp. Okay. So Miles and Stacy, the father son that had the problem. Mm -hmm. This I remember this something like that. This episode this week, they actually sit down and have a heart to heart. It was very nice because it was like weighing on me. I was like, how are these two guys going to be in this house trying to pretend like they want to date the same women when they haven't talked to each other in four years? Now, come on. Well, they should be trying to make an escape plan. I know. <laughs> Some of them are escaping. We we Many people are, are escaping. Yeah. We've got two people that are leaving. We're like, RIP, gone for not forgotten. Yeah. God, it's just like, how does she sit and watch this? And me? enjoy it. Me? Because yes. it's so, so off the wall. It's so off the wall. Yeah, you talk about me watching Mama June. <laughs> you know, that's a great point. And I'll take that criticism. There you go. Mm -hmm. I'll take it. Yeah. Um, Libra Lounge with Keisha is uh, Keisha's podcast. It's great yes. over there. She talks about pop culture. She talks, she'll be talking yes. about Mama June. And yes. um, sometimes I think you talk about wrestling. Do you talk about wrestling? We, we will we'll talk about anything, like yeah. literally anything. Um, six, my six hundred pound life, thousand pound sisters, right, right. You love lots those. of things that discuss Mary Payne. Yeah, uh, anything yeah. pop culture. I mean, music. Anything we talk about our lives, things that are going on with us. Just, anything really? Movies. You talk about you guys watch a lot of we movies. Talk about movies. We watch. I love going to the movies. I I could go to the movie theater every single day if I could. Yeah. So we just talk about everything, really. Yeah. Put okay. it in the box. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah don't, don't put it. Don't, nobody put baby in the well, corner. No, um, well. And I've told you what's happening with us this week. And please follow both of us over on the Instagram. I'm at Pink Shade yes. Pod and Keisha is at the Libra Lounge with Keisha. You just type that in yes. your little search bar and they'll both pop up. And uh, that's it, Keisha. I'll talk to you next week. And then after that, we're going to be talking about two episodes at once. And look at us go. Look at us go. Okay. Bye.